our passenger numbers are extremely low. We're operating at well below 20% of normal activity levels for July. From an overall group perspective, our revenue will be down about 60% this year. So it's, it's very significant for us. Um, we have the, we've eaten into the cash reserves in the airport. The pandemic has been devastating for our business. We have uh, virtually little or no traffic coming through the airport until the end of June. We saw a slight pickup in July, but we're still 88% um, below the levels that we would normally be operating at from a passenger perspective. So it has wiped out not only aeronautical revenues, but also the commercial revenues, because we're dependent on air passengers coming through our terminal to generate commercial activity and generate revenue for the airport. We welcome the government's July stimulus package, in particular the extension of the wage support scheme, and we're reviewing the measures they are in to see how they can support our business. We have sought subvention to cover the operating losses through the winter and into next summer. Unfortunately, we're not confident of a return of international visitors to the level of heretofore next summer, so it's likely that there would be continuing losses through next summer as well. So we're in dialogue with the officials in regard to that. We see absolutely the restoration of air services has absolutely been crucial to support business and tourism. And in that regard, we would have made a submission that there would be supports put in place to restore those key services. Um, similarly, we have sought capital funding for the airport because it's an airport under 3 million passengers and in line with EU state aid guidelines we would be entitled to exchequer funding for safety and regulatory capital. That's a significant cost burden on the airport today pre the pandemic but obviously now where we are um, the airport is not in a position to, to sustain that level of capital going forward and we have sought uh, support in that regard. ACI are predicting who represent um, airports um, all over the world actually. Um, recovery not on back to 19 levels until 2024 and indeed CAPA announced some research uh, lately that has uh, predicting that airport revenue levels will not return for five to ten years back to the, the pre-COVID levels. So we're looking at a reduced level of activity in Shannon Airport for the, the near and medium term and consequently we will have to implement measures to reduce pay um, as we work through that recovery period. We have proposed a number of measures similar to other airports to reduce our payroll costs as we work through the recovery of this, including career breaks, reduced working hours, um, a temporary reduction in pay while we work through the period of recovery and a voluntary severance scheme. And we are not per se looking for significant job cuts in the airport. The measures that we have proposed are more about preserving employment in the long term, but taking some difficult, painful measures in the short term. And we're very conscious that that has an impact on all our employees and, and to be fair to employees, they've been working with us. It's been a very difficult period, but I think the, the difficult and the temporary measures that we have taken will ensure sustainability of employment in, in the airport and in the region in the longer term. Since uh, the separation of the airport and more importantly since the formation of Shannon Group in 2014, we've seen passenger growth at the airport, we've seen significant investment in the property portfolio of Shannon commercial properties and why that's important is that the 115 million that as a group we've invested across the airport campus and the Shannon Free Zone has stimulated economic activity in the region. We've grown the cluster of aviation companies from 40 at the time to well over 80 today. With 14 new companies uh, joined the aviation cluster last year. We built the first aircraft hangar to be built in Ireland in over 20 years. Uh, in Shannon last year. It was finished in January of this year. Significant project. So we're very committed to, again, our mandate from government to promote aviation and to optimise the, re the return on our land and property assets. So we are already losing money. We have significant losses incurred. We make money traditionally during the summer in this business. We lose money in the winter. We've lost money coming into the pandemic. We've incurred substantial losses okay, in okay, the pandemic case, in there. and we're looking at it into the winter period. Ask. And we're are subventing significant losses in the Shannon Heritage business and therefore we would not be in a position to continue that through the winter period and we've had to take difficult decisions 
to um, temporarily close, not open some of our sites this year and temporarily close others at the end of the peak season because of the level of losses we're incurring. Uh, despite extensive marketing and a number of initiatives and getting national coverage on, on the opening of both uh, Bunrati Castle in Folk Park and King John's Castle in Limerick, the numbers have not picked up to any huge degree. We're still down over 70% in visitor numbers and revenue in Bunrati Castle and Folk Park, and we're down 86% in King John's Castle. And what's really disappointing in relation to King John's Castle is that the domestic market has actually fallen on last year. So we're down about 40% on where the domestic market would have been. You, you've repeatedly told us that most of the sites rely um, for uh, business on, on international tourism. Last year, the figures that I've seen, last year Bunratty Castle had 39% uh, of the visitors were Irish only, uh, King John's Castle 26%, um, yet Craganone was 79% of the visitors were Irish, the GPO was 34% and Malahide Castle was, was at about 35%. So Craganone has twice as many Irish visitors as the rest and it's the only site that was never opened. Could you explain that, please? Craig and Owen is, um, works from very low visitor base. We had about 15,000 visitors there last year. You're correct. It's predominantly a domestic market uh, because of its location. But again, it would have been reliant on particularly, it's open from June through to mid-September, uh, would be very heavily reliant on um, school tours for the June period. Obviously, we weren't open in June of this year. Um, and looking... At that business, Craig and Owen would lose money in any event, um, but because overall the portfolio of sites we were able to support that business uh, prior to the pandemic, we're obviously losing money right across the business now because of the collapse in our revenues. And consequently, we made the decision to open our key sites um, to make sure that we had a site available in County Clare, Bunratty Castle and Folk Park, with 26 acres of land available for the domestic market while the schools are, are on holiday. And again, King John's Castle in Limerick. I, I would suggest to you that there were a lot of parents looking for some place to bring their children right across the Midwest uh, to bring them for a day or an hour um, because they were unexpectedly under their feet since, since, since March and 30 acres of parkland uh, and a cranog and a castle um, would have been an attractive proposition if it were open but it wasn't, it was closed and remains closed and really uh, I think um, I put that to you but the second question I'd ask is do you think that Shannon Heritage is a good fit in the Shannon Group and is there a degree to which this COVID crisis has been used by the group to, to demonstrate uh, uh, or to hobble Shannon Heritage uh, to the extent that somebody will have to take it, somebody else will have to, to take it? Um, Chairman, I wouldn't agree that it's been used as an excuse. I don't think any of us would have envisaged starting this year how devastating this, uh, the impact of this pandemic has been on our businesses. As I referred to in my submission, we were projecting growth in Shannon Heritage this year. We had expanded the portfolio and we had taken on a new attraction. So it's very, very disappointing that we're in the position we're in. Uh, we do not receive exchequer funding. And consequently, each of our activities have to generate a commercial return. And that commercial return then in turn allows for capital investment. We were also working closely with Fulcher Ireland to secure capital grant funding for the redevelopment of Bunratty Folk Park under the Platform for Growth Scheme. You mentioned um, capital requirements in Bunratty. Have they, if you can outline those requirements please do. The capital that we have sought is for the redevelopment of Bunratty Folk Farm under the platform for growth and we're in um, ongoing discussion with Fall to Ireland and indeed we have been in discussion with our own officials on that in that regard. The new site we took on last year was in relation to the casino in Malahide. We have contractual arrangements with Fingal County Council to operate Malahide Castle, Newbridge House and the Casino in Malahide and they have reopened in line with the government roadmap Are for they reopening. Closing? Are they closing at the end of August like uh, King John's Castle and Bunratty Castle? 
There are different arrangements in that we don't own those sites. We actually operate them under contract and they will continue to operate under contract. Through to the end of the year. So they'll be open when all the sites in the Midwest are closed? They'll be open in line with our contractual requirements, yes.